It's game 158 of the season for the New York Yankees in the playoffs, but still a shot at first place in the American League East. Aaron Judge and the boys getting ready to host Tampa at the stadium. Yankees pregame special sponsored by Town Fair Tire your local Ford dealer Vantage TV by Frontier and Colonial Toyota in Milford deep to left field going back Cabrera looking up see ya he's done it home run number 50 no rookie has ever hit 50 home runs in a season Judge making history in the Bronx. Hello, everyone. I am John Pearson, joined in a moment by Eric Dobratz. He's at Yankee Stadium. But first, that guy, Judge, and a guy who's calling for him not only to win Rookie of the Year, but AL MVP as well. And that guy is our own Rob Dibble, host of The Rob Dibble Show on 97.9 ESPN Radio. And Rob, we'll talk later about him, but quick 15 seconds, why you think Judge is going to be the MVP this year. Oh, just from my standpoint as a former major league pitcher, no one's met more in their lineup. Altuve, Jose Ramirez, you look at Aaron Judge, he's met more to the Yankees than those other two MVP candidates. So that's why I think Aaron Judge is your MVP in the American League. All right, Rob, we'll let you bust loose on that a little later on. But first, we're going to take a quick temperature check on the Yankees as they enter the final five games of the season with a crack still at first place in the American League East. For more on that, we head down to the stadium with Eric Dobratz. The, the Yankees wrapped up their postseason spot this weekend with a win in Toronto. For tonight's starter, Luis Severino, earning a playoff spot was satisfying. I was excited, you know. A lot of people say, you know, you're not, you're not going to make it. And we had a lot of good guys here, you know, uh, and that was, you know, a very good experience for all, all of us. We got some young guys in here. We got a good mix of veterans. Um, and I think it just, you know, everything meshed, you know, early with this team, really early. And we got a chance to, to punch a playoff spot. But the Yankees aren't just satisfied with clinching that spot. This is a group that wants to make a serious run at a 28th World Series title for the franchise. The Yanks have won 13 of 17 and feel good with the postseason baseball starting next week. Yeah, I mean, it's good. Obviously, you want to be hot uh, going into the postseason. And, uh, you know, we feel good about ourselves. You know, obviously, we have a uh, absolutely... Uh, you know, it's just t talented guys playing with Gary, Aaron Judge, Severino, some of the young guys, and some veteran guys that have been here for a while doing what they've been doing. While Joe Girardi has tried to balance his lineup from the everyday players to the pitching staff, injuries have played a key part in shaping this year's club. Looking back on it, they may have helped the Yankees find their 2017 identity. I feel like we've dealt with some adversity this year. Um, so, I mean, that's good. Experience under your belt. And, and we have a lot of veteran guys in here who've been far into the postseason and won World Series. So being able to rely on them and, and you know, learn from them and, and just take it one day at a time and keep doing our jobs. we got the team to do it. I mean, we got the pitch staff uh, that can definitely get us deep into the postseason. And, um, I mean, I definitely feel like like we're, we're a team that could do some damage. We're still playing hard, obviously. Uh, you know, we're not mathematically out of the division, so we're still playing hard, but, you know, we have, we've been having fun for a long time. While happy with the way his team is entering the playoffs, manager Joe Girardi says the division title is still the ultimate goal. He said today that his team will continue to play hard and try to avoid a one-game take-all scenario. John? And looking at the numbers, the Yankees haven't been worse than second in the American League East all season. And if you take away the month of August in which the Yanks went 14 and 15, but the Red Sox went 18 and 9, well, these last five games might look a little bit different. We bring Rob Dibble back in now. And Rob, you heard what the team had to say as they get ready for uh, playoff action. How would you approach these last five games knowing what's still on the line? Well, I mean, this is the best case scenario for the New York Yankees right here because you could still win the division. And the Boston Red Sox, final four games are against the Houston Astros. They're playing poorly right now. They're pitching staff. Their two best guys, Pomerantz and Sale, just got banged up by the Toronto Blue Jays. So Yankees are playing very meaningful games. I'd still try to win that division if I were them. I don't want to go to that one card uh, one game wild card play in game. So they still have a shot to win this division. That's going to be great for the final five games of the season. 
so you don't start thinking ahead, Rob, and trying to juggle the lineup for that, you know, win or go home playoff game on Tuesday? If you did, what would you be doing? Well, baseball players don't have that mentality, John. They think one game at a time. They're thinking those final five games, how are we going to stack up? How are we going to get that rotation lined up if we don't do go into the postseason? And so that's the way they're going to play it. And then you take care of your injuries. Who are the guys, if we're getting closer and we're not going to win the division, who are we going to rest? So it's, it's all about right now the last, next couple of days to see if the Red Sox lose the next couple of games against the, the Blue Jays and then start that series off the Astros, how you play those final three games, I think. Thank you, Rob. We're going to have more from you to come in just a little bit. Uh, the Yankees rotation will likely see who we're going to see in the playoffs. We'll have that later on. But first, all rise. The case for Aaron Judge as AL MVP has everyone talking, including his teammates. Man, right now he seems like he's heading everything, so he's uh, tough at bat. I mean, he's carried us all year. Um, you know, to come out in this rookie, rookie season, hit 50 home runs is incredible, and it's the reason why we're here today. The Yankees' Aaron Hicks, fresh off the DL, getting set to take on the Rays at the stadium tonight. First pitch coming up just after the top of the hour right here on My TV 9 Here's a look at the starting lineup. Brett Gardner leads off for the Bombers, followed in the order by Aaron Judge, Gary Sanchez, and D.D. Gregorius, who had a night off last night. Starlin Castro plays second and bats fifth, followed by Greg Bird, Chase Headley, and Jacoby Ellsbury. Aaron Hicks, fresh off that DL, will bat ninth. And as Eric Dobratz tells us, he sure knows how to make an entrance. High fly ball, deep right center, Hicks back on the track at the wall. He leaps and he makes the play. At the plate and in the field, Hicks can do it all. Last night, he robbed Wilson Ramos of a grand slam. Hicks has done that several times this season. He's got to be back and get in the lineup prior to next week's playoffs. I mean, it's tough, you know. I mean, I just want to be out there uh, grinding away with my team and, you know, in injuries happen throughout the year. But, um, you know, I just happen to get one that uh, lasts a little bit longer than I want to. And, you know, the most important thing about having a great team is that you got to have guys behind them, you know, to be able to, to kind of pick up the slack and, um, you know, be able to play in their place. Hicks is back in the lineup tonight. He'll bat ninth and play right field as Aaron Judge will get a day as a DH. John? All right, thank you, Eric. Another Aaron you may have heard of named Judge has certainly made his mark not only on the Yankees, but on the entire league. I caught up with him yesterday at the stadium and asked him about his rookie record season and that record 50th home run. I still don't think it's sunk in yet. I haven't really thought about it just because we're still in the playoff push right now, you know, so I can't really focus on too many, you know, personal accomplishments when this team is about to do something special. So uh, that'd be a better question for, for the offseason. Well, how, what do you make of this team? It seems like everyone's hitting their stride right now at a good time, whether it's pitching, defense, offense. It seems like you guys are in a good spot going to the postseason. Yeah, it's just about getting hot at the right time, and that's what we're doing. You know, if you want to get hot at the end, and, you know, you're going to have those bumps and, you know, grind during the season, the ups and downs. But as long as you're getting hot, you know, September and October, you know, that's what matters. If I said to you in spring training, Aaron, you're going to hit 50 home runs, you're going to hit 280, you're going to be on a playoff team, would, would you have believed me? Um... That's tough to say. You know, I set my own personal goals and stuff like that that I try to reach. And, um, you know, you strive for them. I always want more. You know, I'm not, I'm not satisfied with 50. I'm not satisfied with just making it to the playoffs. You know, I want to you know, we want, want to have success in the playoffs. We want to win a ring. We want to bring a championship back to New York. And, you know, so this team isn't satisfied. So I'm just excited for what's to come. How, how have you kept it all in check? I remember talking to you just as the, everything was peaking. I think judges' chambers weren't even built yet. Uh, you've had the ups, the downs. How have you kept it all? you know, in balance and, and it kind of drowned it out the noise a little bit. Just understand that it's it's part of the game. You're going to have the ups and downs. You're going to have those good couple of weeks. You're going to have those bad couple of weeks. But it's just about, you know, just trying to stay positive, stay even keel. And, you know, for me, I just leaned on my teammates. Anytime I had was having bad games or something wasn't going my way, you know, I really just focused on, you know, how if I'm not hitting, what else can I do? Can I make a play on defense? Can I, you know, try to take an extra base on when I'm running the bases or Anything I can do to help the team either way, it doesn't always have to be hitting, you know. So just lean on your teammates like that and just trying to contribute, you know, any way you can is what kind of helped me out. By all standards, this has been an incredible season for Judge. Take away a poor August and you're looking at even more spectacular numbers. And if you add up just the months of April, June and September, you get 33 home runs, 72 runs batted in. That's a really great season for any player. Rob Dibble joins us again now. And earlier in the show, Rob, you said Aaron Judge, uh, MVP, Rookie of the Year. Make your case uh, for MVP, and you could talk a little longer this time. 
Well, here's the first thing. His on-base percentage is better than Altuve and better than Ramirez. All the guys around Aaron Judge have had career years. You know, Didi Gregorius has had a great year. Uh, Headley is starting to hit the ball better this year. When Matt Holliday's healthy, he's having a great year. So he makes everybody else better in the lineup. That's not to take away from Altuve and Ramirez, but if this is the other night, this is his first at bat, so he hits the first ball to the wall. If you're a pitching staff, this guy's a game changer. This is the next at bat. He hits a home run the opposite field. So now as a pitching staff, you're going, all right, we, we got to try to pitch around this guy. We got to try to change things up. So the pitcher comes in with a change up. He hangs it. Guy pulls it for another home run. That was 49 and 50. So when you're going through a lineup, you're worried more about the guy that's a game changer with one swing of the bat. Look at his power numbers, on base percentage, over 100 walks, almost 125 runs scored. You know, all of the things that you look at with Aaron Judge, you know, I, I'm not going to take away from the other guys with their 200 hits and their batting averages, but this guy is irreplaceable in this lineup, and he makes everybody better. That's why I think he's your MVP this year. And you just have to look at those numbers in August for the team and, and for Aaron overall, and it's not no coincidence that you know both weren't playing well uh, when Aaron wasn't playing well. Now, playoffs right around the corner, Rob. Uh, whether it's a one-game playoff on Tuesday or a, a longer series, how do you expect them to pitch Judge in the postseason? Very carefully, John. I mean, you're going to try to pitch around this guy, and once again, Gardner's got to make them pay. Didi Gregorius, Sanchez, they're going to get a lot more fastballs to hit. You're probably going to see a lot of uh, stuff high and tight, low and away on Aaron Judge. He's got to be patient. Trust that you have the power when you make contact to hit it out at any point in this game. So they're, they're going to be, if it's a wild card game, they're going to be playing in New York. If they're on the road, this guy's got power to leave any ballpark in the major leagues. Trust your ability. Be confident. Just making contact. Put the ball in play. This guy's going to do a lot of damage. Rob, have you been impressed with what he's done, like off the field, and the way he's handled everything? Uh, you know, just looking at him now, a lot of guys, you know, whether they're veterans for four or five years, wouldn't be able to handle it the way he is. And he's such a team first guy and always composed and seems like just a really great guy. Well, the coolest thing about Aaron Judge is, you know, you kind of, it's not hazing, but the rookie's got to do some certain things. And he's, he's been in control of the music all season long, which was a big thing back when we won the World Series. Rookie was Hal Morris, and he had come over from the Yankees, by the way. They set the tone. He was always happy. He was never woe is me kind of attitude stuff. He had two really bad months with the strikeouts and stuff, but he was still playing great defense. When he was on base, he was running the base as well. That's a sure shine, sign of great character. I love the kid. He's a great kid. He's got a very low ego. E ego. He's got very low maintenance stuff. That's great stuff for a team player. All right, Rob, thanks. Uh, we'll, we'll check back with you in a little bit. We have one question for you when we come back. Who's going to win the World Series? So you can think about that. Next, though, the Yankees are going to make a long playoff run, if they are. Who are they throwing on the mound? That's next. This is your New York Yankees pregame special on MyTV9. There's Greg Bird getting ready for tonight's game. They start a little after 7 right here on My TV 9. The Yankees will send Luis Severino to the mound tonight, having a great season for the Bombers, 13 and 6 with an ERA just over 3. The youngster will uh, with a staggering 221 strikeouts in just 187 innings pitched. He'll face veteran righty Matt Andres for the Rays. More on Severino now from Eric Dobrats at the stadium. Before the season started, the Yankee pitching rotation was a huge question mark. An even bigger question was Luis Severino. Well, tonight, the 23-year-old goes for his 14th win of the season, and manager Joe Girardi says he's been an ace for his staff. It's been an unbelievable season. Um, I look at what he's done during the course of the year and the growth in, in, in him matching up so many times against aces and being able to deliver for us the amount of games that he has given one run or less up I mean, the young man has, has pitched really, really well, and he's a big reason why we're here at this point. Severino only pitched three innings in his last start. Obviously, he wants to go longer tonight. What will be his last regular season start and then possibly a playoff start next Tuesday night. All right, thank you, Eric. So it appears the Yankees rotation is set for the early part of the playoffs with Severino scheduled to start that wild card game Tuesday if the Yankees are actually playing in that one, followed by CC Sabathia and Masahiro Tanaka in games one and two of the American League Division Series. Sevi, as they call him, his Yankee teammates, is ready to go. Do you like the ball in a big spot? Yeah, of course. You know, I'm, I'm totally, you know, onto that. And 
and looking forward, you know, to uh, get us to the playoffs and you know and, and, and compete. Just to stay the course, you know, uh, we've had a good year so far this year, and you know, you just want to keep that going. You know, good pitching, good defense, uh, and get some timely hits. It's why you get yourself ready in the off season. It's it's what you're talking about in spring training, and it's it's what you ultimately want to do. And I took a little bit different route to, to get there this year, but whether well, I've been here all year or not, I feel really a part of this team, and the guys have have helped me feel that way. If you were the manager here and you make it to the ALDS, what would your rotation be? Oh, that's not up to me. That's way above my way above my pay, pay grade. I just go out there and get ready when they tell me to, and and uh, you know be ready to pitch. Sabathy's got a. Pretty good pay grade himself, Rob. And uh, let's talk the first two starters of a potential ALDS. You say CeCe Sabathia and Masahiro Tanaka. How come? Well, first of all, you get the veteran CeCe Sabathia. You know, if Severino's your wild card playing guy, if you win the division, Severino's probably going to be your guy again. And then you come back with CeCe Sabathia. He's had a great year. So you're going from a hard throwing righty to a soft toss and lefty to possibly Tanaka, who's a soft toss and righty. And in there, you could put Jordan Montgomery could come in there early. Uh, you could even have Sonny Gray if it was a, a knockout game for you. So uh, you've got veteran guys. You've got amazing arms. And then you got one of the best bullpens in baseball. So for me, Masahiro Tanaka, CC, they've got to be more perfect than Severino or Sonny Gray that are going to throw 95 miles an hour. So that's why I'd have them second and third. A pretty interesting call there, Rob. Now, you got Sonny Gray. They picked him up for, for just this reason. Where, where do you see him fitting in if they make a nice run here? Well, you know, in the division series, it's a five-game series, so you're going best of, you need three wins. And it depends on what the best matchups are for the Yankees pitching staff. So if CeCe Sabathia, say he goes game one in that, you've got T Tanaka in game two. If you're up two games to nil and you just want to, you know, end that series, maybe Sonny Gray. But if all of a sudden now you're down maybe, you know, no games to two and you need a win, maybe you come back with Severino. So I'm glad I'm not Joe Girardi, but you still got a lot of great options and you got some really good arms with Severino and Sonny Gray. Nice to have options this time of year, no doubt about it. Rob, we're not done with you. We've got one more order of business to hear from, from you in a little bit when we come back. Now, the Cubs won it all a year ago. Will they make it back to the World Series again this year? Rob will tell us straight ahead. Brett Gardner getting ready to lead off again for their Yankees uh, in their game against the Rays tonight. Eric Dobratz caught up with him just a few minutes ago. All right, Brett, we're heading down the home stretch here, and you're still playing for a division title. How does that help you as you prepare for the playoffs? Well, I mean, um, you know, it's um, it's one of those things where we just uh, try and take things one day at a time. I mean, I know it's one, something that we always say and we always try to preach, but um, just try and take things slow and realize that, um, you know, what Boston does, how other teams play is out of our control, but we can't control how we play. And, um, you know, recently we've been playing good baseball and hopefully um, – you know, keep everybody healthy and finish strong and um, see where next week takes us. How much fun has this season been for you? You've been through it all over the years. It's been a lot of fun for me. I mean, um, I've probably had more fun this season than uh, than, than all my seasons here. And um, just because, um, you know, a lot of the young guys we have on the team um, really just uh, becoming superstars right in front of our eyes. And it's a lot of fun to watch firsthand and, um, and be a little part of that and to see them kind of come into their own. And, um, you know, guys like everybody talks about Gary, jo Gary Sanchez and Aaron Judge and, um, you know, Luis Severino, D.D., and guys like that, seasons that they've had. Um, even a guy in the bullpen, Chad Green, he's a young guy that nobody really talks about, but he's a big weapon for us down there, and um, I feel good about our chances. You're not the old man of the group, though, right? I'm not quite, not quite, but uh, getting pretty close. But, um, you know, I've been here a little while, and um, I guess the longer you're here, the the, um, the more you appreciate um, the more you appreciate things, and um, I've had a lot of fun this year. All right, Rob Dibble joins us again. And, Rob, I remember the very first show we did this year. I, I give you a pat on the back because you like the Yankees. You like them to make a run at the AL East and make the playoffs. Uh, but are they your pick to come out of the American League and go to the World Series this year? Um, John, I'm not going to go with the Yankees. I do love what they've done. But the, the Cleveland Indians with Terry Francona, uh, best pitching staff in the American League, best defensive team in the American League, one of the best offensive teams in Major League Baseball, and if you look at their differential, which is runs scored and runs not allowed or given up, it's the biggest one in Major League Baseball. Better than the Dodgers, better than the Nationals. So coming out of the American League, going to the World Series, I got the Cleveland Indians. They're coming off a loss in Game 7 last year. I think they're fired up, and they want some uh, revenge this year. And who do they play in the World Series, Rob? They play the Washington Nationals in the World Series. Washington Nationals, they're... 
first three starters, Scherzer, Strasburg, Gio Gonzalez, amazing. Uh, their offense has been amazing. And then Matt Wieters, maybe the, one of the most underrated catchers in the major leagues, best pickup in the offseason, has handled that pitching staff. So it's going to be Indians versus the Washington Nationals. All right, got about 10 seconds. Who wins the whole thing? I think it's going to be the Cleveland Indians. I love Terry Francona. All right, Rob, thanks. It's been great working with you all year long for you Rob too. Dibble. Eric Dobratz, I'm John Pearson. Game time just a little while here on MyTV9, Yankees and Rays. Have a great night, everyone.